Hey guys, my name is Jonathan Henderson with Pressure Washing Marketing Pros. In today's video, I want to go ahead and talk about why 99% of pressure washing businesses are losing customers every single year. And yes, I will stand firm on that and say 99% because like I said, majority of people that are watching this channel and majority of the people that I've worked with have lost customers over the years, right? But it's about what are the percentages, right? Of how many customers you lose. Are you only losing about one to 5% of your customers every single year? Or are you losing a significant percentage of your customers every single year, right? And I will say that most of you watching this YouTube channel are losing a significant portion of your customers every single year because you're not doing what I'm about to talk about next right because I do understand that it's almost impossible to go ahead and keep 100% of your customer base right some people are gonna move some people sell their houses you know whatever it may be right it's gonna be impossible to retain a hundred percent of your customer base right but what I will say that majority of you guys are not doing and what I want to talk about in today's video is reactivating your CRM you're wondering what is a CRM now, if you're a business owner, especially in the pressure washing industry, almost all of you guys, 100% of the people watching this channel should know where a CRM is, but I'm going to discuss what a CRM is. It's a customer relationship manager, right? So you basically manage your customer relationships on a CRM. And so some examples of some CRMs that are out there that are specifically for the pressure washing industry are, well not specifically for the pressure washing industry, but a lot of pressure washing businesses utilize them are gonna be House Call Pro, are gonna be Jobber, are gonna be the customer factor, right? They're gonna be Marquette. Those are some customer, you know, you know what I mean, relationship managers or CRMs that a lot of pressure washing businesses use. And what a lot of you all aren't doing is, a lot of you all are not consistently you know at the forefront of your existing or even past customers mind right because there's a reason why a lot of google searches there's a reason why a lot of people are still googling pressure washing company near me pressure washing near me right because like i said a lot of people don't have the loyalty that you expect or a lot of customers don't have the loyalty that you expect that they have right you could do a customer's house wash two years ago but I guarantee you if you're not keeping up to date with that same person or if you haven't developed some sort of you know relationship or if you have not contacted them back I would say five times half the time they're gonna go with somebody else that next year you don't know how many call recordings and call trackings that I listen to for a lot of the new customers or a lot of the new customers that my clients get and we hear and they say well I use so-and-so but I don't remember the company name right and it's because that company didn't do a good enough job of keeping in contact with that past customer. And that's what you guys need to do. So step one would, to, would be to get a CRM if you don't have one, right? That should be the first step. You need to just click off this video and go get a CRM immediately. The second step is, is you guys need to be in consistent contact with your existing and past customers because I just had a podcast with Jim Dubois of Squeegee Pros out of Charlotte, right? And they're a multi-million dollar exterior cleaning company. And he has a rule called the 60-25-15 rule where he talks about 60% of your marketing and sales activities should be towards new customers. 25% should be towards your existing database you know what I mean, or existing customers, and 15% should be against those quote-unquote lost customers that you have not been in contact with or the ones that you have not done work for in two to three years, right? And you need to focus 15% of your efforts on those kind of customers because if you break down the math, right, because a lot of guys always wonder, well, Jonathan, it gets slow in the summer, or Jonathan, it gets really slow in the fall time for me. We're coming up to winter. And I hear this all the time and I say, this is the perfect opportunity, right? This is the perfect opportunity. Whenever you're slow, the first thing you should be doing whenever your business is slow is going into your CRM and contacting past and existing clients because you're gonna get jobs. You're going to get jobs that way. Like I said, let's just say you had 2,000 people in your database, right? Let's just say you had 2,000 people in your database at that point, right? And let's say that you sent out an email campaign or even a text campaign, which like I said, you can use things like text magic, all of that, right? In your CRM, you can also probably curate some email campaigns. But let's say you had 2,000 people in your email database, right? And since those people are already you know, you've already talked to them, you've already done a lot of their jobs before anyway, 
right? They're already, they already know, like, and trust your business, right? So let's say you had 2,000 of those people and let's say you sent out a text campaign because email, I'm not saying email's dead, email definitely works, but text has a much higher response rate than email. But let's say you did a text campaign, right? Where you texted all 2,000 of those customers. And like I said, you can use apps like Text Magic that can automate this for you to where you're not physically texting 2,000 people yourselves. And like I said, you can just do it out of press of two to three buttons. You can go ahead and send out a, a templatized or a personalized kind of text, right, to your email database. And let's just say that it was like a gutter cleaning campaign that you're starting in August. Because as you guys know, going into the fall time, right, pressure washing is still pre prevalent, right? And a lot of people use it because, you know, the holidays are coming up. But gutter cleaning is a way that you guys can maximize your, you know what I mean, the amount of revenue that you're getting during the fall months. And so let's say that in August you sent out a text blast for gutter cleaning, right, to the 2,000 people on your list. And let's say that 50% of the people responded. So that's 1,000 people responded. And out of those 1,000, let's just say that only 25% of those people were actually interested. Well, guess what? What is 25% of 1,000? 25% of 1,000 is 250. So that's 250 people that you're now scheduling for gutter cleaning. And so you can spread that out in weeks, however you may want to do it. And an average gutter cleaning job is what, like 200 bucks? And I'm not the best at math and I don't have a calculator right now, but 250 times 200 is gonna be at least 40 to $60,000 that you guys could have an added revenue for your guys' business, right? Including the upsells and everything else. You know what I mean? By just a simple text blast and by re-engaging with those past customers and re-engaging with your existing customers that you guys have, right? Because like I will always say again, a lot of people don't have as, you know, a lot of these customers don't have as much loyalty as you think that they have, right? They, they really don't. They will forget your company if you do not keep in constant contact with them. And the thing about it in the pressure washing industry, it's not like a roofing industry, right? You guys, your guys' services are needed every single year, multiple times a year for a lot of people. For example, somebody could go to you for window cleaning and in that same year they can go to you for gutter cleaning and Christmas light installation, right? So that's three times that you saw that customer. So there's no reason as to why you're a pressure washing business and you're losing a significant portion of your clientele or your customers, right? There should be no reason as to why you're losing a significant portion of them because you should be re-engaging with them. So here's a just sample kind of campaign that you guys can run or like throughout the year, right? In February, start running something with like, hey, we're, we're having a spring special, you know, $50 off house washing. You can send a text blast to text magic or you can do it in your CRM, right? And you can do it to existing customers and ones and customers that you have not worked with in several years, several months, whatever it may be, right? You can send out a text blast just like that, like a spring special. Then you can run a summer special too. So after the spring, after the heavy hitting spring season, run a summer special. After the summer special, right, because things are a little bit slower, you can run a fall special where you're saying, well, Jonathan, spring and spring and summer. Well, like I said, those people that didn't, you know, utilize pressure washing services in the spring are probably going to utilize them in the summertime, right? So just re-engage with them and then. And like I said, in your CRM, if you have one, you can categorize people that you've done jobs for that year or that month, whatever it is, so that you're only hitting on the people that you have not worked with for the past year. You know what I mean? And these are easy things that you guys can do. And then going into the fall time, everybody may need, you know, gutter cleaning or window cleaning, whatever it may be in your area, right? And even in the wintertime, if you do Christmas light installation, you know, during that time of, I would say September, you can start running a Christmas light, you know, start priming them up for Christmas light installation with a text blast. Because as you know, in October, November, that's when people usually get that stuff done, right? And so this is what I'm saying, re-engaging with those people. Like I said, the 60-25-15 rule I love by Jim Dubois, where 60% of the customers you should be getting should be new customers. The 25% should be your existing customers and the 15 should be the inactive people you have not worked with in years or ages, right? Because this will not only make your business run consistently, but also what, what it will allow you to do, like I said, is to have some repeat businesses, you know, not lose a significant portion 
of your clientele, like I said, and have some consistency in your job so that you know, okay, I'm, I'm gonna get X amount of jobs this month, I can count on X amount. Because like I said, it's all about action. The actions that you guys are taking are going to get you the jobs that you want. So it's all about just taking action. And so a lot of you guys are not re-engaging with their past customers, which you need to be doing. Because you know what they're gonna do? They're just gonna Google the next company, right? If they don't remember your name, they're just gonna Google the next company and you just lost that customer. Because now that next company that they work with now, that next company could go ahead and they may have a good relationship with them. So now that, so now, you know, they're lengthening that customer lifetime value. And that's another thing that I wanna talk about too, is a customer lifetime value, right? You're increasing that. So even when you're re-engaging in that database as well, another thing that you can also be doing is that you can, like I said, increase the customer lifetime value within a year. If that person has only done house washing with you every single year for the past three years when you're engaging with them, then at that point, you may be able to get them to do a gutter cleaning, you know what I mean? In the fall time, or maybe hang their lights in, the, in Christmas time. And they may not pull the trigger on it for a year or two, but guess what? If you're always constantly re-engaging with your list consistently, at one point when they do need it, who's the first person they're gonna think of? They're gonna think of your company. You're gonna be the first ones that they think about whenever they're like, oh man, I haven't done gutter cleaning in three years, but you know what? You know what? I, I keep seeing this one company. Haven't we used so-and-so's company for pressure washing and our house washing and all that other kind of stuff? Didn't they just send an email for gutter cleaning? Yeah, look that email up. Then bam, you have the email. You've been engaging with them, right? So you have that stuff on deck right there. And so now, a, a, you know, a customer that you just had for house washing, you have for house washing and gutter cleaning now. A client that you just have for gutter cleaning, you can have for house washing as well now by simply just engaging with inactive and your existing customers that you have in your database. And another trick of the trade, because I'm giving you guys a lot of gems in this video, a lot of gems. Another trick of the trade that you guys can go ahead and do is also keep people that you have not worked with as well, because a lot of you guys are only putting people that you're doing jobs for in your CRM. No, put everybody in your CRM. Put every single person in your CRM that has reached out to your business, whether they've worked for you or not. Because like I said, this rule also applies that opposite way. Because if they went with another company and that other company does not keep in touch or keep engaging with that customer that you did not initially service, you know what I mean? Whenever that next year comes and they need service, right? And you've kept them in the, and you kept them in your CRM, even though you, you did not work with them yet, when you're engaging with them like that, guess what ends up happening? When they need pressure washing services and they don't remember that other company that they used the year before, guess what? They're gonna use your company, right? Because you've engaged with them over these past couple of months, right? And you're at the top of their mind. And so these are the tricks of the trade that you guys definitely need to be implementing in your pressure washing business so that you're not losing a significant portion of your customers and you're also lengthening the customer, you know, and the customer value that you are getting out of them or the lifetime value that you're getting out of them. And like I said, you're adding some consistency to your business. And once again, you're not losing a significant portion of your customers every single year. And you're having to go out and just headhunt for new customers when you already have a wealth of customers in your customer relationship manager or your CRM, right? So like I said, I don't get paid or sponsors to go ahead and promote CRMs or anything like that. But like I said, personally, as you guys know, I'm a partner owner of a junk removal business. We also use House Call Pro for our own CRM. But like I said, in the pressure washing industry, you have Jobber, you have Marquette, you have House Call Pro, you have, there's so many of them that I cannot think of right now, guys. Like I said, Salesforce, uh, Service Monster. You have a lot of these different CRMs that you guys can go ahead and look at. And so, yeah. But other than that, though, guys, if you need help with your marketing and you want to rank, you want to rank better, you want to get more jobs with ads, you need a new website, whatever it may be, go ahead and click the link below in the description for a free strategy session with us and we'll evaluate your area and we'll see how we can go ahead and help you get the results that you want because that's our main job, right? Is to get pressure washing businesses more jobs. So if you have any questions, concerns, please leave them below in the comments and I'll definitely go ahead and have me or my team answer them. But thank you guys for watching the video. I'll definitely see you in the next one.